On September the 6th, 2023, the 7800 XT released for $500 MSRP. And you know what? If you go check Newegg.com, you will see as clear as day, gamers love this card. It is officially sold out and now listed for back order. Now, for whatever reason, gamers absolutely love this card. It's obvious based on the early sales data. Now, I understand that gamers do love the card. I just don't fully understand why. And I'm not being critical or cynical or trying to be mean or criticize AMD or anything like that. I'm legitimately saying I don't fully understand why. And we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of the card. Now, unfortunately, I wish I could say, hey, this is my full review of the 7800 XT, but unfortunately, I don't currently have one. Now, I do have a plan, though. You see, I have some incredibly awesome Patreon members. Thank you for being a supporter. I really do appreciate it. And what I would eventually like to do after Patreon builds up enough is take that money and invest it into a 7800 XT and then make two videos here on the channel. The first video will be a before you buy type of video about the 7800 XT and the second video will be a dedicated 30 day AMD GPU only challenge using the 7800 XT. I'll stop using my 4090. I'll only use the 7800 XT and I will document my experience all the way through, and then of course address the most common questions about AMD GPUs. Are AMD GPUs really that bad? Are they really worth it? Are the drivers really that bad? You know, stuff like that. Now, if you wanna help me make my AMD GPU only challenge a reality just a little bit faster, check out the link below to my Patreon page. I would really appreciate the support. Plus, you get some extra benefits for yourself. It might be worth checking out, so thank you in advance. Now, with all that being said today, I want to be as objective as I can possibly be about the 7800 XT because again, gamers love this card and again, I don't fully understand why because I see a lot of red flags, I see a lot of questionable decisions and I do want to give credit where credit is due. I will give credit where credit is due. We will definitely talk about the benefits of the 7800 XT. However, there are definitely some things that you may not know about that you need to know about. And no, not all the other major tech reviewers have talked about it. So, Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, one thing you may learn if you watch Gamers Nexus video or if you watch Jay's Two Cents, they both talk about the naming convention of the 7800 XT. They claim that AMD told them that the goal here was for the 7800 XT to compete with the 6800 non-XT and not necessarily the 6800 XT. Now, first of all, I just wanna say that is a red flag to me because, well, A, if that's true, why not just call it the 7800 and not the 7800 XT? After all, whenever it comes to the RDNA 3 architecture, AMD already has a 7600 non-XT. So obviously they're open to releasing GPUs in this generation that don't say XT. So why not just call it 7800 if it's meant to compete with the 6800 non-XT? That's a little bit of a shady move there. And I don't necessarily agree with that because the average person walking into Micro Center to buy the car or going to Newegg to buy the card, they're not thinking this card is meant to compete with the 6800 non-XT. They're thinking the card is meant to compete with the 6800 XT because, well, the card is called the 7800 XT. That makes sense to me, and I think it's gonna make sense to the average person walking into a retail store to buy these cards or to order them offline. But hey, that's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comment section below. But now let's talk about the specifications and other actual benefits of the 7800 XT. And the biggest benefit by a mile is the fact that it does offer incredibly awesome value. Looking at the charts from Hardware Unbox, they ran a 15 game average at 1440p using the original MSRP of all the cards you see listed. And number one at the top of the screen is the 7800 XT. That is incredibly awesome to see. Also looking at Hardware Unbox, cost per frame, typical Newegg price, with a 15 game average at 1440p, you can see the 6700 XT is the official best value GPU on the market currently, but the 7800 XT is number two in line right there with the original 6800 non-XT equaling it. Now, in addition to that, the 7800 XT launched at $500 MSRP and the 6800 XT launched at $650 
$1,000 MSRP. That is a $150 price reduction in MSRP. Now, in addition to the value proposition, the 7800 XT does have a higher transistor count. The 7800 XT is more power efficient. It's rated at 263 watts, whereas the 6800 XT is rated at 300 watts. So this means you only need a 700 watt power supply, which is what AMD recommends on their official website, instead of the 750 watt power supply. The 7800 XT has a higher boost frequency, a higher game frequency, 120 AI accelerators, whereas the 6800 XT has none to my knowledge. I couldn't find any listed on AMD's official website. The 7800 XT has a faster memory speed. It also has more memory bandwidth, and obviously it comes with an AV1 encoder and a decoder, and the 7800 XT also supports DisplayPort 2.1. Now those were all the actual benefits I could find about the 7800 XT not yet talking about benchmarking or anything like that. Uh, but before you get too excited, because yes, some of those benefits definitely sounded good, let's take a look at some of the cons. Now the 7800 XT, when compared to the 6800 XT, has less compute units, less ray accelerators, less stream processors, has a slower peat texture file rate, has less texture units, has less ROPs or ROPs, and has less infinity cache. Now next up, I wanna point this out, and I think this is so incredibly important. This is coming directly from Jay's Two Cents. He confirmed the GPU die versions, and I love that he pointed this out because not everybody else did. And as you can see, when you look at RDNA 2, both the 6800 XT and non-XT mod Models were using the best die available for that GPU generation, which is Navi 21. However, when you look over here with RDNA 3, the 7800 XT is using the second best die available for this GPU architecture. And it doesn't matter if you want to compare it to the 6800 XT or the 6800 non XT. The fact remains, you are getting a cut down die with the 7800 XT, and the product stack has a officially been shifted. Now, obviously the 7800 XT has some advantages. It has some disadvantages. We can definitely see where some product shifting was going on here. But the real question is, how does it perform? Because at the end of the day, you can call the GPU whatever you want to call it, as long as the price is decent and it performs very well then what's the problem, right? So let's take a quick look at some of the benchmarks out there. Looking at hardware and boxes, six game average, you can see that the 7800 XT at 1440p is 5% faster on average than the 6800 XT. Now, while 5% is nothing to write home about, it is still technically faster. So that is a win for the 7800 XT, but it does not tell the entire story. Switching over to Gamers Nexus's benchmarks, we can see that in Dying Light 2 at 4 4K, the 6800 XT is outperforming the 7800 XT. And I will admit, neither one of these cards is actually a 4K card and it shouldn't be used for 4K gaming. But the fact remains, the last generation's architecture with a 6800 XT is still outperforming the new generation's architecture. When we lower the resolution, Dying Light 2, 1440p, you can see the story remains the same. The 6800 XT and the 3080 is outperforming the 70. 7800 XT in Dying Light 2. And the story continues at 1080p, where again the 3080 and 6800 XT both outperform the 7800 XT. We see the same behavior at 4K in Resident Evil 4. We see the same behavior at 1440p with Resident Evil 4. And we see the same behavior yet again at 1440p in Tomb Raider. And speaking of Tomb Raider, looking at 1440p with ray tracing, the 6800 XT is is still outperforming the 7800 XT. And now finally, switching back over to Hardware Unbox, six game average, 1080p, ray tracing, you can see the 7800 XT is matching the 3080, and the 6800 XT on average is only about four frames behind. However, whenever we look at the 1440p data, the story changes. The 6800 XT is now only three frames behind on average, the 4070, the 3080, the 7900 XT, and the 4070 Ti all outperform the 7800 XT in ray tracing on average. And the 4070 Ti here is topping the charts while being one of the worst value propositions on the market currently. Okay, that was a lot of data. And I know you may think, 
hey, I cherry picked some data points to make the 7800 XT look bad, but that's not really what I was trying to do. What I want to do is not say the 6800 XT is faster because it's not on average. On average, technically, the 7800 XT is faster by about 5%, but I would really say the cards are about the same because I wanted to showcase some situations where the 6800 XT clearly outperformed the 7800 XT in both rasterization and ray tracing and then finalize with the overall averages. And I hope you were able to see that the 6800 XT and the 7800 XT are basically the same card when it comes to performance. The main benefit here is that the 7800 XT has an AV1 encoder, which as a gamer, you may never use that. It really just depends if you plan on making content, if you're gonna stream to Twitch or something like that. But outside of that, that may not be a big benefit for you. Yes, the 7800 XT is more power efficient, but the reality is if you have a 6800 XT or non-XT or a 6900 XT, you could always undervolt those cards or power limit those cards and you could get better power efficiency by doing that. So you have other options there outside of going and purchasing a brand new GPU. If you already have a 6000 series card, you clearly don't wanna upgrade to the 7800 XT. And I understand the point. Well, you shouldn't upgrade every GPU cycle. You shouldn't upgrade every time a new GPU comes out. The 6800 XT is still a viable card, etc. True, I agree. However, the 6800 XT at the time of filming is coming up on three years old. Even if the card is still holding up strong, it is totally normal to want something new, to want something more. And if you waited this long to upgrade your GPU and you said, hey, Nvidia is not for me, they shifted all the product stacks, etc. Unfortunately, the 7800 XT is the exact same thing. AMD has officially done the exact same thing as Nvidia. They have shifted the product stacks. They had made cuts to various points of the hardware. Yeah, you gain here, but you lose there. For every pro, there's basically a con. And in terms of overall performance, they're reselling you the exact same amount of performance, even in terms of ray tracing. The 7800 XT is marginally better in ray tracing than the 6800 XT. That's why I'm like the 7800 XT to me is just a, uh, it's a meh card. Now, with all that being said, I understand why it's selling out because logically, if you're gonna buy a new GPU right now, and if you don't already have a 30 series card or a 6000 series Radeon card, then yeah, you might as well buy a 7800 XT. It's 500 bucks, which is a fair price. It's the same price as a console and it's about the same price as the 6800 XT. And even though the 6800 XT beats it in some games and is about the same in terms of overall performance, you might as well get the latest and greatest architecture. 100%, I agree with that logic. That makes sense. So there's a lot of shadiness here with the 7800 XT and that is why I'm less than enthusiastic about it. And I really wish more creators would have hammered in the point that the 7800 XT is basically a 6800 XT with an AV1 encoder, a little bit better power efficiency, and in terms of overall performance, it's about the same thing. So if you bought a 6000 series GPU three years ago and you're waiting for an upgrade, I'm sorry, but I don't think the 7800 XT is for you. Now, if you have anything older than a 30 series Nvidia card or a 6000 series AMD card, then yeah, go for it. It's a good value and it performs well. I still wanna get my hands on one and do a before you buy. I still wanna see what driver maturity is like on this card, and I still wanna do a 30-day challenge. So if you're willing to help me out with that, check out the Patreon link down below. If you watched this video all the way through, thank you so much, you're awesome. Hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out, and if you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.